Good evening. I'm Pastor Glenn Kleppe. This is Zion Lutheran Church in Pine City, Minnesota. And this is our Good Friday service. Once again, the service tonight is not from the Lutheran service book, but we are singing two hymns from the Lutheran service book, number 451, Stricken, Smitten, and Afflicted, and 447, Jesus in Your Dying Wolves. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, by the nails and thirst, O Lord, have mercy. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, by the blood that stained the holy cross, O Lord, have mercy. Come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning his shame, and now he sits at the right hand of the throne of God. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. was upon him, 
and with his stripes we are healed. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you carried our sins in your own body on the tree so that we might have life. May we and all who remember this day find new life in you now and in the world to come, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. O Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood you redeemed the world. Save us and help us. We humbly implore you, O Lord. We adore you, Lord Jesus, in your cross and passion, through which you have brought life and joy into the world. Be gracious to us according to your mercy, and bless us and lift up the light of your countenance upon us, and give us your peace. Almighty and most merciful God, give us grace so to contemplate the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we may find in it the forgiveness of our sins, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, you saved the first Israelites through the blood of the Egyptians' firstborn sons. Save us and help us, we humbly implore you, O Lord. Gracious Jesus, our Lord and our God, at this hour you bore our sins in your own body on the tree, so that we, being dead to sin, might live for righteousness. Have mercy on us now and at the hour of our death, and give us a holy and peaceful life in this world, and through your grace, eternal glory in the life to come. Where with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and rule, God forever. Amen. Christ the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Christ the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Christ the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus, the Lamb of God, has taken away the sins of the world. By the command of Christ and the power of his death, I forgive your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We implore you, O Lord, that your abundant blessing may be upon your people, who have held the passion and, the, and death of your Son in devout remembrance, that we may receive your pardon and the gift of your comfort, and may increase in faith and take hold of eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Seven words of Jesus from the cross. The first word, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the Prince of Peace. When you were mocked, you did not respond with harsh words. When you were tormented, you did not react in anger. When you were nailed to the cross, you prayed for forgiveness for those who caused you to suffer. Give to us the virtues of gentleness, patience, and a forgiving spirit, that we may repay evil with good. Teach us also to love our enemies, and as children of the Heavenly Father, to live in peace with all people. Amen. The second word. I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. <laughs> Thank you. 
While one was ridiculing him, the other told him to stop, because while they deserved their punishment, Jesus was innocent. Jesus told the man, truly I say to you today you will be with me in paradise. I think that was an amazing thing for Jesus to say. He didn't often tell people that they would go to heaven. And here he makes the promise to a convicted criminal. It would seem that this thief knew little about Jesus and was probably unbaptized. And yet he received the sure promise from Jesus that he was saved. In your baptism, Jesus turned to you and said, You will be with me in paradise. You have become a part of the kingdom forever. It was easy for the thief. Jesus just gave him the promise. Jesus was at that very moment giving his life for the sins of the world. Likewise, it's easy for us. Jesus did what was necessary. Through his death and resurrection, he has given us his sure promises. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in your infinite mercy, you heard the plea of the thief dying on the cross next to you. We pray that you would open our hearts in mercy to welcome those who turn to you and rejoice in their salvation. When our last hour comes, hold us firm in our faith and bring us also to live with you in paradise. Amen. The third word. Dear woman, here is your son, and here is your mother. Jesus Christ, while you suffered the agony of the cross, your thoughts turned to the welfare of others. 
Your concern was for your mother in her sorrow. We pray that you would regard with pity all parents who mourn the death of their children, and all parents who sorrow because their children have suffered tribulation or forsaken their faith. By the power of your healing, we pray that parents and children may know peace, and that relationships may be restored. Amen. The fourth word, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God, Father of all people and creator of all that exists, you hold all people in your power. We pray that you would not forsake the world which your son died to redeem. Even though we still see the influence of sin and evil all around us, assure us of your continued presence in our midst. Help us to know your love in our lives so we can show your presence to others. Amen. Fifth word, I thirst.
Jesus think about his thirst? Certainly there were many parts of his body crying for his attention more than his dry throat. Jesus knew that his ministry was finished. Everything was completed. At this point, Jesus was looking past the death sentence, the suffering, and the pain. He was ready to complete the task, and he was fulfilling scripture. Like King David in Psalm 69, Jesus was feeling abandoned and persecuted. He was feeling his humanness. And he was thirsty. But God is good and provides abundantly. Don't forget about that. Sometimes when things are difficult and not all the way, not at all the way we want them to be, we can forget how good God is. With everything that's going on, think about what you need. God provides it. All your body needs and forgiveness and life. Savior Jesus Christ, who endured not only the spiritual anguish, but also the physical pain on the cross in our place. We thirst for the healing that only you can provide. When we find ourselves suffering, give us peace and patience to endure the pain that comes our way. Comfort us with the memory of the cross, and use this to give us the strength we need to bear our burdens. Amen. The sixth word, it is finished. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, you are the author and finisher of our faith. 
You did not stop short of finishing the task given to you by our Father. We pray that you would complete in us also everything that you intend for us, so that as children of the Heavenly Father, we may live for his glory. Amen. The seventh word, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Best friends. 
Judas, one of the twelve, decided to turn on Jesus and sell him off for thirty pieces of silver. That was such an insidious evil that Judas also ended up killing himself over it. Then there was his arrest. The temple guard, those men entrusted with guarding his father's house, went to the garden and took him captive at the direction of the Jewish leadership, the very people who were to govern his people. Those same leaders were the very next morning shall crucify him as the evil overflowed, and then there was the evil of his treatment. He was viciously scourged and nailed to a cross. He faced more evil than anyone ever. Why wasn't Jesus delivered from evil? The simple answer is that he didn't want to be. Throughout his time on earth, he was concerned for others, not himself. That was evident as he performed many miracles to help others, and none for himself. Even at his arrest, he willingly went with his captors while telling them to free his disciples. Jesus' attitude remained constant even on the cross. The first thing that he said from the cross showed his concern for those who were crucifying him. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Then he turned to the criminal crucified next to him and said, Today you will be with me in paradise. And finally, he turned his love toward his mother and his friend John and said, Behold your son and behold your mother. He remained seemingly unconcerned about the evil that was attacking him, but rather continued to care for those around him. But the evil got worse. The attack was more intense. Things got more difficult for Jesus. Later from the cross, he cried in agony, My God, why have you forsaken me? As his physical body struggled with abuse, he said, I thirst. That's as close as Jesus ever came to putting his own needs ahead of his people's needs. But he really wasn't. He was making sure that he could remain faithful to the end. And finally, he said triumphantly, it is finished. He had accomplished all that he came to do for all of his people, for us. But the evil that had surrounded Jesus his whole earthly life had taken its toll. Jesus was about to die. Of course, we know and we celebrate the fact that his death was the defeat of our sin and took our death. We know that his death was victory for him and for us. But there was one more thing that Jesus looked forward to. He was anticipating his joyful reunion with his father. Jesus was forsaken on the cross, but he knew that was almost over. He said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Finally, he himself was delivered from evil. In fact, just like he delivers us, he delivered himself. More than that, he defeated evil. By his sinless death on the cross, he defeated sin. By the battle he fought with evil and won, he defeated the devil. A few days later, Jesus would triumphantly rise from the dead and defeat death itself forever. He faced a lot of evil. In fact, the devil himself. And he came out the victor after a considerable amount of suffering and a painful death on the cross. So we are the ones who are truly delivered from evil. We face life surrounded by evil. Not only that, we are filled with it. In spite of the fact that we are dead in our trespasses and sin, Jesus has won forgiveness for us on the cross, and we have life. We are delivered from evil. We are drawn together with our Heavenly Father through his body, the Church, drawn by the Holy Spirit. Jesus came to our sinful world and surrounded himself with sin and evil. But more importantly, he became sin for us and died for sin. We are delivered, and we are part of his heavenly family forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus,
Jesus Christ, as you gave your life on the cross in our place, you commended your spirit into the loving hands of your Heavenly Father. Give us the grace to trust in you for all things. When our last hour comes, grant us peace, that we may close our eyes with confidence, knowing that we also will dwell forever in the hands of our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray for all those things for which our Father would have us ask, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. 